Hello everyone, Gustavo Mendez here. In this video, we're going to be talking about opening your project for the first time, the interface, how to import media and how to create your first timeline. I have here a project that I created and I set up my output formats and everything else that I want. So I have three different resolutions. I'm going to be working at 25p, half float, color spacing full range, and I have a one-to-one -one source and a two-to-one -one proxy creation if I want to. So let's open the project. Here we have on the top section of the window, our library. So on the left side, it's where we're gonna be creating folders and we're gonna see any folders that we import. And here on the right side, we have a section where we can see all the media that we import and that we have inside folders and all the metadata. We have several columns here that we can see related to DBayer, the resolution, everything related to red, black magic, airing, and you can actually turn these on or off and that will stay within the project. So let's bring some media into the project. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on import and here I'm gonna choose this MXF file. I want the first header for timecode. I want the tape name to be file name and the tape director level to be zero, meaning the actual file name will be my tape name. So I'm just gonna click on import. And here, as you can see, two things happen. One, we have a file here, so we can see it's metadata. And these columns, you can turn some of them on or off if you want. So for example, I don't want to see edge code. I can just click here and say, remove column. And here on the left side, you're gonna notice that the folder created is the same as the one that was on my drive. Why is that? Because under preferences, I chose to follow the folder structure from my drive. So it basically, since it only has a exports folder and a DVW folder, this is the structure that it's in. If I want to import more files, I just have to click on import. And if I want to click right here, you're going to find one. And if I want to bring, for example, a whole folder of files, I can just click on a folder and say, I want this, the, uh, these options are correct. I just click on import. And if you're trying to import a folder, there's a difference. You actually have several options that you can turn on or off. You can choose a filter by image size, you can filter by file format. You can auto create library folders. If you don't want this, just turn it off. You can import and splice it into a timeline if you want. And here you have the choice to import as a background task or not. So you can keep working and we're just gonna keep doing it. And you can choose to import to allow duplicates. I don't need any of these, so I'm just gonna click on import real quick. And what's gonna do is, as you can see, it's actually bringing all those files here into my library. So if you just drag it down here, we have several red files here in the same folder. Since I told that you not create a new folder, you can notice that you actually brought it inside the same folder I already had open, the one here that it's orange. So for example, I'm gonna delete these files here real quick. I'm selecting by choosing the first one, holding shift and then clicking on the last one. Gonna delete them here. And remember, this do not, does not delete media from your drive, just from the project. So I'm gonna import it again. Click it right here, click on import. And this time I actually want to auto create library folders. So if I click on here, you will notice that the same thing happened. So as you can see, every single file was brought in with the folder and it's following the folder structure of that specific drive. So here I have this folder, this one, which is the next one, and the red files inside. Now, it seems weird that I cannot see the files here. I would need to click on each one of the folders. That is not necessary. All you need to do is click on the root folder, and here we have this little button called Recurse. 
So this will look for every single file within the folder that you chose. So if I click right here, you can see that all my red files are showing. And you also have the option to click on show all that will actually show you everything that's in the project. And right here on this side, right here close to the middle of the screen, you actually have the choice to filter certain things. So for example, if I don't want to show any compositions that I created, if I don't want to show any clips, so you can see everything disappeared. What if I don't want to show any proxies that were created for each clip? So you have this option as well. If we go back to our folder with the red files, I'm going to recurse it real quick. You can see that if you select the file, I can click on this button here called properties. And this will show the properties of that file. So you can see it's a red file here in options. I can change it to FLUT or IPP2. You can choose for GPU, CPU, or a combination of both and all the metadata that if I wanted to change anything. And if I do, just click on apply. You can do that to multiple files as well. So for example, if I select a bunch of files here holding shift, I can just click on properties and I can basically change several options for several different files. So I'm just going to do this, click on apply and all of these clips now will have that metadata that I chose. Now that we have some clips in the project, let's create a new folder here real quick. So I'm just going to close this folder just to make it easier for us to see. So I'm going to click on this button here on the left side and I'm going to type comps. So this is the main project folder and since it was selected, the folder was created within that. But for example, if I have this DVW folder open and selected, as you can see with the orange mark, I can just click on new folder and create a folder inside that folder. And if you don't need that, you can just delete it. Or you can actually, if you have a folder and want to move it somewhere else, you can just move it anywhere you want. So this is now on the root, but I'm just going to delete it as well. And here, I created a folder so I can actually create a new composition. A composition is the same as a timeline. That's just a different name that we use. So to create a composition, I have my folder selected where I want it to be created. I'm going to click here on new composition and it's going to create a composition right here. The thumbnail is a film reel and I can double click and just type a name for the composition. But I can also, if I have it here selected, I can press F2 and I can type the name as well. So it is the current edit as the status is showing here. And right down here, you can see the name of the composition and the name of the project. If I want to delete this composition, I just need to select it and press delete. And if I want to see the properties of this composition, I can just click here, I can change the name, I can change the name of the track, so I can change this, for example, to phase, click on OK, and I can change audio patching as well. If you need to change your audio patching, all you need to do is make sure you have the track that you want to be changing it. So for example, A1, and you need to know how many channels you have inside that track. So for example, if this was a 5.1, I could say that, for example, here I would select C3 going to my channel 3, which is the out, C4 going to channel 4, C5 to channel 5, and C6 to channel 6. And we can do all the way up to eight channels out using your video board. So I'm just going to click on apply, click on OK. I'm going to open the folder here where I have a two minute file, and I'm going to press B to overwrite the file into the timeline. Now, if I want to zoom this to the timeline size, I just press F. And I can also use the plus and minus buttons on the keyboard. And I can also use my mouse scroll wheel as well to zoom in and out and just press F and it's all back. 
And here I'm using my main playhead, playhead A. And as I move, you can see that this section right here shows me where I am time code wise. If I want to do an in and out point, I can press I, then O. And right here on the left side, you can see that I have my in point and my out point and the duration between the in and out. And if I want to clean up the in and out points, just do control P. I'm going to create a new composition to show you some of the future functions real quick. So if I create a new composition, select it and press F2. I'm going to type the name as test and we're going to recurse the red folder here real quick. We have it on. So I'm just going to select some files. I'm going to press B to overwrite. And now we have a timeline with a few files. So I'm going to press F to fit all the clips in my window. I'm going to press F1 to see my viewer. Now, here we can see that all the clips are showing on my timeline. And if I press F1 and I want to know which clip I'm actually using here real quick, I can use the filters right here. So right now it's just showing me everything. But if I click under current, you can see that every time I change a clip, it will only show the exact clip I'm parked on. And if, for example, I have a specific clip marked, I can actually change here to any other clip. But if I click on marked, you'll see that it's showing me only the marked clip. And if I have any unused clips on the on this bin, it will just show me just the unused clip as well. So this is very, very useful when you're trying to find something to change its properties or if you just want to see if there's any clips that you have not used for some reason. After we have the footage here on the timeline, I just press F1 and I can see my viewer. And here I can just drag everything and we can see the image that's right there. And the viewer and the library are interchangeable if you press F1 when you're only using one screen. So if I click here, as you can see, I can go back and forth between viewer and the library. But if I press memories, I will always have the viewer of the timeline and whatever choice I have for memories here that I'm working with. So if you press F1 to go back to the library, it disappears. But if I press F1, it will keep the memories until I turn it off and I have my clip playing back. Another great feature of the viewer interface is to be able to see different channels very easily using keyboard shortcuts. So if I press R, I can see the red channel. If I press T, I can see the green channel. If I press Y, I can see the blue channel. And if I press U, I can see the alpha. And if you hold shift plus the letter, it will keep that channel on at all times and if you just press any of the keyboard keys again for example the R it will just go back to the original state. Scene detect and other functions including library refresh are very dependent on drive speed and the number of CPU cores you have so just make sure your configuration matches whatever project you're trying to do so we recommend more cores if you're trying to do restoration work, but if you're doing mostly color grading, we recommend a good number of cores, but faster CPU speeds. Now for us to scene detect, we're just going to click on this button right here next to the FG, BG and PC buttons as well. So if I click here and make sure that I have a track selected in this case the orange bar will show what's selected and it's just scene detecting the timeline right now scene detect is pretty accurate so you're gonna see in a little bit it's really good about fighting cuts but you can actually change its sensitivity by clicking here on scene detect 
in changing the sensitivity. You can choose if it has fields to actually cut on field boundaries, so it does the cut correctly. You can change your color space here. So if it's ASIN, scene and log for range, and this is will probably follow your project, but if it not, you can just click on the color space that you're working with. In the leading, it is the minimum amount of frames for it to do a cut. So for example, if you change this to one and you have a very cutty scene, if it will cut every single frame, but if you click, if you select a five frame lead in, it will actually do a minimum size of five frames for each cut. While scene detect is running, we can actually open the memories tab and see what's going on with the timeline. So here we have several options to actually change what we're seeing and comparing. In this case, I want to look at the event viewer. So the event viewer basically sees the exact number of events that we have on the timeline at any given point. So you're going to notice that every time we get a new cut here from scene detect, we're actually going to see a new event being added to this section here. So as you can see, we're finding new cuts and new events are being added. Now, why are these black and white? It's because there's no grade on any of these clips right now. And on the preferences menu, if you remember, I chose to keep the ungraded clips as grayscale. So in everything here, since it doesn't have a grade or it doesn't have any effects, it's showing as grayscale. While it's cutting, let me show you here a lot of the options that we have. So you can do compares and show the memories based on tracks by the heads. And we have four different playheads that we can set up in different points of the timeline. We actually have the events. That's the one that's happening right now that's cutting and creating thumbnails. We can do a source as well so we can go back to this original file to do a split we can show bay at the input effects point or we can do bays or groups and if i choose something here for example for an event and on this side right side here next to the timeline we have several tools that we use not only to compare but we also have for example burnings and we have different ways to show it so if i zoom in here you can see that for example i can see here file location or i can see image i can see image plus audio for example but if i zoom out and show it here we also have the option to turn on different types of borders so this one for example it's a full border, but I have four different aspect ratios as well. So I can turn up 133, for example. I have different blinking options. So if I turn this on and if I choose one here, it will basically do a blinking for me. So you can see it right there changing. And here we also have after blinking, we can choose the scopes. So we have several different types so we can do CIE, we can do histograms, we actually do vector scopes, we can do parade RGBs, and here we can show the curves while we're grading. So if you're doing a grade, for example, if I go here to my base layer, and I'm going to go back to the printer points, for example, you can see that I can see my bars for red changing here while the other two are staying the exact same spot and if for example if i do a balance i can see all of them changing and moving according to what type of change i'm doing so i have scopes right here and here's the button that we can turn on and off the LUT, the cms in this case the color management and we also have a button for setups where we do setups for different types of scopes that we can save we can change LUTs, we can change grids, we can create our own masks, same thing. We also have viewer, how we're doing brightness with the overlay, color space that we're working here, and a lot of different options as well. And we have the NDI option, which we have a completely separate video that shows how this function actually works.
We also have another excellent function using your keyboard shortcuts. If you press the letter Q, you go back to your source. If you press W, you go to your input effects. And if you press E, you go to your base grade. So it's very easy for you to compare different stages of your work. When you're using the viewer interface, you have the choice to do a fit based on your screen or to actually see the file on its true size, original size. So if I press F1 and go back to my viewer, if I press F, it will fit to the screen. So for example, if I move it around and press F, it will fit here. But if I press G, it will actually do a one-to-one -one size of the original file. So for example, if this was a 4K file instead of 1920 by 1080, it would actually do a one-to-one -one size. So it would actually be much bigger than my interface screen that's 1920 by 1080 right now. Let me show you some of the compare functions that we have. As you can see, I did a change on the balancing printer. So now this clip's not ungraded and I can change the size of these thumbnails using these buttons here on the upper right. And here I can see all the thumbnails, they're refreshing as I move. And I can actually change right, the thumbnail order by source, record, source TC. There's a bunch of different options. And if you have multiple compositions, you can actually open different compositions here and copy grades from one composition to the other. And here notes, it's where I would save a note. So for example, if I have this here and I consider this a note that I wanna save, I can store it and I can save it here. And if I jump to the next shot, for example, and I wanna compare this, what I would do is right here in the section, I have a few different options, not all of them, but I have a few. And if I do, for example, a dual, I can turn this on. I'm gonna turn off MAMS for a second. And I not only have the two views, but I can also turn on scopes and it will show for both images at the same time. And if I press tab, it will actually go full screen. And you can, for example, do a play and go to a different point and see what's going on. Or you can just use your tangent, ball hole, or precision to do a jog or shadow command, for example.